Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part 23 of the processing tutorial. So in the last lesson, we dealt with the keyboard. Uh, we talked about uh, the key pressed and key released methods, and we use them to set a value in this Boolean array to either true or false. So I press the key, it's true. I release the key, it's false. And what that did was it allowed us to keep track of all the keys that were currently being pressed. So if I just mash all the keys on the keyboard, then a whole bunch of things in the Boolean array will be true or false. Now that doesn't mean I'm going to do something according to those Boolean variables. It just sets the variable to true or false. It's up to me later when I made this method move. It's up, up to me in here to actually pick which keys I think are important and then do something with those. So I, I use WSAD in order to move around. And if you remember a a ASCII value, the ASCII value of W uh, for the character works, it just works just like uh, index. So W is equal to an integer, essentially. And you can use the character W and the integer that, that is represented by W in the ASCII table interchangeably. And when I did that, all that happened was I got my ball moving around and everything seemed to be working really well. Okay. Uh, remember we did this move and we made it part of, part of the draw loop up here to avoid the lag that comes with the pressing the key down. So there's that lag that's built in because of typing and that caused a little jerkiness for the start of our, our character. It also helped us to be able to do multiple key presses. Okay, so this was, uh, I think this is fairly, fairly simple, not too difficult. The next few lessons are going to be slightly more difficult. You're going to end up seeing a bunch of new concepts, but we're also going to review a bunch of old con older concepts like what a class and an object and other things like that are. And you're actually going to be seeing classes and objects from now until until the day you quit quit using object oriented programming. So let's go ahead now and, and look at exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take this guy and we're gonna to wanna to animate him across the screen. So this is the player that's going to be in, in our game and I have, I've got this, this uh, from opengameart.org. Uh, there's lots of good, good free sites online to get free game art. I didn't draw this and you can either pick out stuff different if you'd like. You can go look around for some different animated graphics and play with them later. So just download this off, the, off my website Lesson 23 in the supplementary materials. There should be a link on the YouTube video. Okay, so to do this, uh, what we need to do is we're gonna load this whole sheet in. So we know how to load an image in right now. When we're gonna load it in and then we're gonna cut all these pieces out. And this is something that makes a sprite sheet different is that a sprite sheet, it's built in order to have one color be transparent. And in our case, it's this bright nuclear green color. So when we load this in, later we're going to make this green transparent so that the, the background in the scene comes through. And that's the difference between when I say an image and I say a sprite, is a sprite is, is made to blend into the background of a game or something. And I don't mean like hiding in the background. What I mean is you can put the image over the background and it's not going to have, you know, a big block around it, like a green block or something for the image, or maybe a white background or something. It'll blend seamlessly so you can move the character in the game. And all 2D games are built like this, with characters with some type of uh, transparent background or an alpha, an alpha layer that lets you see through it, okay, in, in the parts that you that they want you to see through. All right, so. In this lesson, I'm just gonna teach you how to load this and how to cut pieces out of it. And in the next lesson, we'll learn how to put them all together in an array and then start animating. All right, so first thing we need to do though is we need to create a player class. So I'm gonna call this player. I'm gonna say class player. And do you remember what always comes at the top of a class? It should be the members, right? So I'm gonna make two members here and I'm just gonna use the X and Y for the movement of our character. Then I'm going to make the constructor. So if you remember the constructor is, it looks like a method, 
but it's only called when you create an object. So if I make a player object, then everything in this will be run. And I'm gonna go ahead and in here, I'm gonna set my values to X and Y to equal to 300. Now you're, you're probably, you might be wondering two questions. Earlier you saw me do this. And you're like, hey, why didn't you do that again? That looks, looks it's one line, it looks so much better. Personally, I just prefer putting it on two lines and it just looks a little bit nicer to me. Uh, you can do it however you want. I usually go for readability over trying to make my code more compact uh, because I have unlimited lines in the page so I don't really need to make things more compact in any way. Uh, so here we also, we could have done this one other way. This might be the other question you're asking. Why are you hard coding these values? What happens if I make the screen bigger? And you're right, I could do something like this. I could do width and height divided by two and that would make it it change my, my player starting location when I adjust the size of the game window. But for now I know that the game is always going to be 300 by 300 and I'm not too worried about it because I, I've designed this and I've already decided that this is gonna be it. Okay, so normally you want more flexibility. You don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, all right, so let's actually create a player character. So player, player. And then I'm gonna to wanna to initialize the player inside here. And I did make the, the error of doing this. This isn't really an error. It's not gonna cause a problem per se uh, with the Boolean array at one at least. Uh, but it's usually better it's usually better to declare up here and initialize in setup or in the case of a class declare up here and initialize here uh, the reason for player that you'd want to do that is because in player we're loading files and if you remember from the, the lesson we were loading images when you put something up here and you initialize it up here setup hasn't been run and that means it doesn't know where to look for where you put those PNG files where we put the PNG files in the same place that we put our .pde files. And if you haven't done that, then if, you haven't, if you've done this initialization up here, it, it hasn't set up that folder with both the PDE and the .png files yet. So there's nowhere to look for your, your images. And you'll get an error when you do that. It'll say, can't find this image, can't find this image. And it can be very frustrating. So just keep the keep the better habits this is a this is a good practice here just always initialize inside your setup or initialize inside the constructor okay all right so now that we've created this player we we want to start looking at how we can manipulate this the eventual goal is to be able to cycle through these and look like when i'm pressing left that the guy is going left walking along or going up and going down but to understand how to do that, we need to learn how we're gonna cut these pieces out of this first. Okay, so to cut these pieces out, the first thing I really need to do is I need to load the sprite sheet. So I'm gonna call this sprite sheet. And I'm gonna make a new method called setup sprites. And it's gonna be a void method. So setup sprites. And we're going to do everything with setting up the sprites inside here. So I'm going to load my sprite sheet. Say sprite sheet is equal to uh, new, uh, sorry, not new, sprite sheet equal to load image. And this sprite sheet I have called the professor green. Uh, .png. Okay. All right, so the sprite sheet should be loaded, but we want to draw it. So we're going to make a method called draw player, and we're going to do all the all the drawing for the player inside here. So let's go ahead and and test this out, and we'll do this. And we'll have to come back here, and we can just leave we can leave the ellipse in. It's no big deal. Uh, so let's say draw player. All right. So what did I just do? Well. I use my constructor when the const when I create this object here, when I initialize it here, the constructor gets called, the setup sprites runs, so it jumps down here, it loads the image inside my sprite sheet, and then when setup is done, of course, draw gets called, so it, I can now do my movement, and then it will draw the player, so it draws the player here. So it's just drawing the whole sprite sheet. 
So if I run this, you get this, and then I have my ellipse here I can move around. So this is the whole sheet. And we want to we want to just practice how to cut out one piece first of all. Okay, so let's test out how that works. So instead, I'm going to create a temporary image up here. And we'll delete this later. And I'm going to use this temporary image to cut pieces out. So I'm going to say sprite sheet dot git. And git works by the first is the x and the y, and then you have your width and the height. So that means where am I starting cutting, and then how how much am I cutting? So in our case, let's just cut out 0, 0, 64, 64, and then stop there. Okay. All right. Oh, I need to come down here and change this to temp. Okay. So now I run this. Now you see I just cut out the top corner. And you say, hey, how did you know to cut out 64 by 64? Did you just guess? Uh, well, actually, this in this case, this is 576, and there's 9, so that makes this 64. So 576 divided by 9 is 64 pixels. And the same thing this way. This is 256, so same thing divided by 4. And that just led me to, to see that each one of these characters is 64 by 64 which is very helpful when we're cutting out because we can use a for loop later to kind of cut, 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 and just increment with the for loop. Okay, and we'll see what that looks later. Uh, looks like later, but right now, let's just practice cutting some pieces out. Okay, so that worked pretty well. Let's try to cut out another one here. So let's take a look at, if I try to cut this guy out, what will I have to cut out? Well, I'm gonna start here and it's gonna cut and cut. So this would be one, two over, and one down. So that means if I go one down, so it's, that's 64, and then I go over, it's 128. So that means if I, go, if I start, if I, go, if I go 128 in the x direction, and 64 down, I'll cut out, and now it cuts out that guy. So keep that in mind, and come back here, and look, it's the same guy. And that works for any of these. If I cut out any multiple of 64 and 60, 64, so if I did 256 over and 128, you're gonna get this guy here. So this guy is, he's, he's walking downwards, and so it's cutting out 256 would be four over, and I cut out 128 down, so I'm cutting out this guy right here. All right, so that's how you cut things out. But you'll notice when I do this, and there's a slight problem. I'm cutting out way more than I actually need. If I had this, this green box walking around the screen, uh, my character would be assumed to be the same size as the image. So let's say the ant is coming up and he's attacking. If the ant hits the green box, I'm going to want to detect that, or hit the guy, which the whole box would be assumed to be the guy. I'm going to detect that the ant has hit the guy. But I haven't really hit. I'm still a little ways away here. So I actually want to trim this a little bit. I don't want to cut out this entire green box. So how do I do that? Well, you use you still use git, but you just kind of got to test it first. And I've already done the testing on this. So what I learned was that the guy, let me actually pull it up again here. Uh, you learned this guy, he is 32 pixels wide. And to get a good cut is actually 56 pixels high. So that means I want to start 16 over, and I only want to go 32. And then I want to start 8 down, and I want to go down 56 more. So that means I do 16, and I change this to 32. And I go down 8, and that means 64 minus 8. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom, and I go to 56. Okay, and now I run this, and now you notice I've got a nice, cleanly cut thing here. Okay, and if I wanted to cut out another another character, I can just add 64 to each one of these. So, for example, if I did 80 and 74, it's going to cut out a different character, but it's still centered around them. So, whoever made this sprite sheet was very nice to make it perfectly spaced for us so that we can just use a little bit of addition to pop around and cut different things out. 
And doing sprite sheets it takes a lot of work and you, you got to appreciate, appreciate the artist that did this. And if I haven't mentioned it before, this, this image came from opengameart.org, but there's lots of really good sites out there. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to this guy here, close that. Oh, well, we want that code, we want this code. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much how you cut things out. Uh, the next lesson, what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna learn how to cut out all of the images and put them into a structure that we can use. Okay, so I will see you next lesson and thanks for watching.